the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things He's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you. Let's go back to the story. And I, I think you I think you really get where I'm coming from for those of us. And I think God is saying, I, I needed you to share that because I need my people, would you call them my name, to humble themselves and pray, right? And, and also I need them to bear fruits of the spirit. I need the Holy Spirit to be manifest. I need them to conform to the Son. I don't need them to conform to the Sadducees and the Pharisees. Some people, what is that? Those are religious leaders during Jesus' time. They wanted in orchestrated the killing of Jesus. But if Jesus rose again anyway, amen? All right. Now, verse 21. And the son said unto his father, I have sinned against heaven, and in thy sight I am no more worthy to be called thy son. Now, that's why I'm going to talk about the people who do come to the body of Christ or those who are body of Christ who backslid and left Christ. Look, we want to sit there and change our status. See, it's too late. Once you receive Jesus Christ, you are his child. You are God's father. You are a child of God. And it's only you that made the decision to walk away. It's only you to make the decision to call yourself no, less than a son and be a servant. So the boy said in the 21, he said, I'm no more worthy to be called your son. Look at verse 22, look at the father, look what a Christian is supposed to do. And the father said to his servants, bring forth the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hands and shoes on his feet. Come on now, look at the difference. Look at the difference of how a father, a Christian, cause you remember this parable is for us to understand the parable, right? And, and, and the father says, bring, him robes and rings and that's authority is what he said. I'm gonna put a I'm putting rings a ring on his thing. I'm gonna put a robe on him. I want him to walk around as my son, not as my servant. Verse 23. And he said, bring here to the fat calf and kill it and let us eat and be what? Merry. Have fun. Look, he's ready to go to have a little party. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and found, and they began to be married. Now, look at what I'm trying to say here, y'all. Look, come on now. The Bible even says that heaven even rejoices when a sinner repents and come back to the body of Christ, because that's the will of the Father. He said, I will for no man to be lost. I want them all to be saved. He wants everybody. He wants the atheist to be saved. He wants the backslider to be saved. He wants the people who never knew Christ to be saved. He wants the world. Jesus Christ came and died for the world. Amen? So just look at how we are supposed to look at the world and receive them as they come to Christ. We're not supposed to be judgmental. We're not supposed to weaponize the body of Christ. That's what people do. You know, even in politics today, we have people sit there and they just want to weaponize the, the, the gospel. They want to do that. You know, it's funny. They want to do the same thing that they did in, the, in uh, Jesus' time. You know, they, they put people out of the synagogue. If, if they don't like what they're doing, they don't conform to the rules of, of that society. Now in politics, we got people sitting there saying, well, if you're not a Republican, then you're not saved. Democrats may have just said, well, if you're not a Democrat, then you're not saved. All this, all this junk. And sit there and try, and then, oh, listen, that is not our job. Jesus, I did not come to judge the world. I did not come to condemn the world. I come to save the world. You are called to save, preach, so that they can receive salvation through Jesus Christ. You are supposed to do just like these people. When one person repents and turn around, you're supposed to rejoice and be happy. That's the gentleness, huh? That's what Christians are supposed to be. And so, so verse 26, and he called one of and, and, and he called one of the servants and asked, no, excuse me, verse 25. 
Now his elder son, now this is the representative people I call religious. This, this his elder son was in the field and he came and drew nigh to the house. He heard music and dance. I mean, come on, man, you all stuck up. You should be coming in, hey, part of me, yeah, hey. Turn, you, went, you know what they'll say, the roof is on fire. I'm in the house now, right? I am the game, huh? He heard music. He, 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 he drew near the house, but he didn't want to go into the party. Matter of fact, I don't think he even knew. <laughs> what the, look, that's, that's, <laughs> let me throw this back at y'all. Let me throw this back at y'all. Some of you, some of you, Chris is so deep. Look, <laughs> you're so deep that you can't even, it, I mean, you heard the, the, the house, the place that you live at, having a good time. And you still want to approach the house instead of going in and saying, I'm ready to hear pie over here too. No, we want to sit there and say, oh, y'all, y'all sent it, man. Y'all don't supposed to be having fun. Y'all supposed to be, you supposed to be like servants. You know what I mean? You, you don't supposed to be, you can't, you should be going to the club. You should be going to any dancing. You should be hearing all kind of music. He supposed to be hearing gospel music, huh? I mean, does that make sense? People in there enjoying themselves, having a good time, and you're going to sit there and just draw near the house and, and kind of just sit there and try to figure what's going on. Why couldn't you just go in the house and enjoy yourself too? Because sometimes some of us become so deep, so spiritually deep, so legalistic that we can't even enjoy ourselves. And then that's what the world looks at and says, well, I want to be a Christian if you can't even enjoy yourself. You can't dance, you can't party, come on. They don't have a problem dancing. They don't have a problem listening to music. I'm pretty sure there wasn't no gospel music going on at that time. I'm pretty sure there wasn't a church music going on at that time. I know some of y'all be deep say, yeah, yeah, they was in there saying, they was no, they was, they was dancing and having music. Uh, that's what they were doing. They were partying, okay? They didn't say they were doing uh, uh, they didn't say no orgy party or anything like that. They were just having fun. And I think that's what we as believers got to understand. You can have fun. Just don't, just don't do the things that, that you know that's going to hurt other people. It's going to portray the trust of somebody else. You just need to have fun. Enjoy yourself. And, you know, check the music you, you're listening to. But you need to, if you like that music, you listen, you enjoy whatever music you want to enjoy. Just remember, just remember that Jesus Christ is your Lord. Be led by the Holy Spirit, amen? But I don't let nobody else tell you what you're supposed to listen to. Don't tell nobody else how you're supposed to dance. You enjoy yourself. Be you. And you, as you change, you change because of you and God, not because of people, okay? So I want to put that in there. Now, let's go back to the scripture and... And, and 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 pick up where they were partying over the here and over there. The roof, the roof, the roof is on fire. <laughs> and look at this. So he so 26. And he called one of the servants, you know, mess somebody else's time partying, and asked what these things meant. And he said unto him, Thy brother is come. And thy father has killed the fattest calf because he has received him safe and sound. The man even telling him the reason they're partying is because the boy has come back safe and sound. Don't isn't that what we want people to do? Come into the body of Christ safe and sound? Isn't that what we want? We don't want to sit there and be and act like we're sucking up on eleven because somebody was out there living riotously. Huh? We want them to come back. That's the, that's the rejoicing of a believer to have. And look at verse 28, though. He was angry. And what are you angry about? He would not go in. Therefore came his father out and treated him. Now, what, what, what I want you to catch on that, and this is on that, this one, I saw this video maybe a little long, but I, I think it's important. This parable is very important because it got all the elements in it. If the fact is that this boy became angry because the man is back safe and sound. He's no longer living the ride that's living. He's back safe and sound, but his brother's angry and would not go in. He didn't even tell him why he's angry yet, but he's, he got upset. He got offended. And that's sometimes I think we as believers have a tendency to do when we don't operate in compassion. We don't operate in gentleness. We want to be rude. 
See, because you can't be gentle being angry. You, 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 you rude. He would not go in. Therefore, his father came out and treated him. Now, I like the fact is that the believer that's representing the body of Christ is coming out to see how he's doing. That, that man had rejoiced in the fact his own son, the other son, came back safe and sound. And I don't know if you caught the fact, the fact is that when that boy was coming back, his father was always looking for him, and he saw that boy come back, and he just lost it and said, praise God. I mean, he was always looking down that road, looking for his son. And he didn't care how he came back. All he cared was that he came back. We shouldn't care about uh, how people come back. We should just care about the fact they came back to the body of Christ. Amen? So <laughs> I think that's very important for us to remember that. Let's go back to the scripture. And, uh, and we'll, we'll go ahead and close it out with the last verse of the scripture. And, and like I said, just remember, the boy was angry. He was angry. Even though the brother is back, his brother is back safe and sounds, he's angry. And he didn't like that. That was not good enough for him. He's angry. And his father with the love and compassion of a Christian comes out and checking him out. And, and, and that, so notice that father and his, 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 his personality, his, his gentleness. See, he was compassionate and gentle with the son that was righteous. And, and, and now he's coming to talk to the one that's offended. And he answered and said unto his father, this is the, the, the mad one now, the upset Christian, right? And they weren't Christians back then, they was the Jewish people, but that's okay. He, he answered and said unto the father, lo, these many years do I serve thee. Neither transgress I at any time thy commandments. And yet thou never gavest me a kid that I make merry with my friends. But as soon as this thy son was come, which has devoured thy living with harlots, and that's a horse, right? Thou hast killed him. Thou hast killed for him the fattest cat. You know, it's look at that. And, and that's why I'm talking about some people when they're trying to live religiously instead of trying to just grow into the fruits of the spirit, they, they become, they're so mad because they're active. They want to do things. Look, he wants to party with his friends. He want to have party, but the joke won't party, right? He won't party. And, and, and look at the father. Look at this cool brother. I like him. I like him. And that's what we should be as Christians. Why would the, the lead of the father? And he said unto him, son, Thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. You remember, he divided the goods of the, the father of the two sons. He said, 32, it was meet, meet him, your son, that we should make merry and be glad. For thy brother was dead, spiritually dead, cut off from God by choice, and that's what we give everybody a choice. He is alive again and was lost and is found. That's, the, that's, the, that's what we as believers are supposed to project on the, on, onto the world. We know that, that we were once in the world ourselves, many of us, maybe some of us grew up in the church and never, never messed up, that's fine. But even if you did that, you should always be focused on the will of God to always receive people into the body of Christ, because God, God died for the ungodly. We are the children of God. And that spirit of gentleness, that compassion that he wants us to project is what makes us fruitful and helping others come into the body of Christ. When they see us, they need to see Jesus. We don't need to be indignant and being, please get that politics we see today. I mean, this is 2021. We just came out of four years of division because of just political ideology. Opposed to the fact, appreciate the fact that our country needs two different things of thoughts so that we don't all think the same. Because somebody said, if we all think the same, somebody is, nobody's thinking. We don't need to be one thought. 
We need to have different thoughts and opinions so we can make the best decision, amen? And the same thing is we need to love the world in the sense of loving sinners and having that compassion that they receive Jesus Christ as a personal Lord and Savior. And even when a backslider comes back, we need to have show that love, that compassion, that gentleness, amen? Have you checked your fruit today? I hope you take this parable and understand this is where Christ is supposed to be. This is how we project ourselves. We should both be in gentle, loving kindness and compassion. Amen. Have you checked your fruit today? I hope you have. I'm checking mine daily. God bless. See you next time. Bye-bye.